just heard a clip from Tam Lin, which is the seventh track on Fairport Convention's Legion Leaf. This is their fourth album. It was released in December of 1969 on Best Ever Albums. It's the 26th ranked album of 1969. It was ranked 93 of the 60s decade and 914 overall their fourth album they released uh, three albums in 1969 and um this was the third of those three that's um, a remarkable output by the way. three albums in yeah. one year that's incredible yeah they are considered the best or most influential british folk band if if um, america has americana uh Fairport Convention is what British folk is, except <laughs> British folk is hundreds of years longer than Americana is drawing on. Rule um, Britannia, would that be what the equivalent of Americana is? Exactly. Yes, there we go. Um, um, this is a band that's still touring and making music today, although the lineup over the years has changed consistently. Um, this uh, Legion Leaf um, is really a turning point in the band's evolution. Um, the albums leading up to this were more um, uh, covers based and they drew on their influences of the birds and Bob Dylan um, and American folk music um, and incorporated that into their sound. And this is where they decided to um, deep dive into British folk music and draw on all of those uh, spoken word and old um, ballads and songs and basically just focus on that going forward in in all of their music um, now, can i ask a question josh if you don't mind yes go and for if it. you don't know no worries but because i know you know i don't know if any of us are experts on british folk right here that's the the par you know perils of picking random albums but do you, was there a british folk scene that was as active as say the american folk scene was or were they dipping into the american folk scene because they ended up becoming that era's British folk scene, like the 60s, late 60s. Yeah, based, based on my research, they they started the British folk scene. Okay. Um, and it may have been around, you know, I'm sure it was around in, like, pubs and taverns and stuff to some extent, and, you know, people just knowing the songs that have been handed down for a long time, but they are the first band to electrify it in some sense and, like, and put it into like a modern sound, um, taking these songs and modernizing them. Gotcha. So um, it was uh, Legion Leaf is uh, two Middle English words that mean um, loyal and ready. Mm. And um, it was, this was their highest ranking album in the British charts. Um, it was spent 15 weeks on the UK album charts as, and it made it as high as 17. Um, this was their most successful album um, from a, from an album charting standpoint. Um, the BBC radio named it one of the most influential folk albums of all time. Um, the lineup for this uh, album is uh, Dave Maddox on drums, Sandy Denny on vocals, uh, Dave Swarbrick on violin, mandolin, uh, Richard Thompson on lead, lead guitar, who is probably the, the most famous of uh, the people in this band, and Simon Nichol on rhythm guitar, and Ashley Hutchings on bass. Um, now, right after this album came out, two of those members left the band and formed, uh, for various reasons, and formed their own bands. Um, and then uh, some of these people have come and gone um, as the years have gone on as well. Um, there's only eight tracks on this album, and um, there is a deluxe release version of this that has extra um, album tracks that was came out later, but the eight tracks um, is what I listened to. Um, in terms of uh, context around this album, um, the album was recorded after a bus crash um, happened with their band and killed their original drummer. Um, Martin Lamble, who was 19 at the time, and the girlfriend of Richard Thompson. So they were coming back from a, a concert in Birmingham, and four of the five band members were in the accident. The uh, bus driver fell asleep, and uh, the bus went down an embankment. Oh. Um, so 
So unfortunately, the drummer died and the girlfriend and the other band members sustained injuries. Um, so as you can imagine, that really um, kind of put things into focus for them and caused some emotional uh, hardship. And they, but you they don't, took... <laughs> you don't really hear it on the album, though, do you? You'd think in the aftermath of that that you we'll we'll get there eventually. But I, I will say that it does. It does not sound like an album written after such a profound tragedy in some ways. No, I think it caused them to reevaluate what they wanted the band to be. Ah, gotcha. Um, they, they really, um, they, they had dabbled in British folk on their last, or uh, their previous album. Um, there is a song called, um, I believe it's called Star Sailor, um, uh, Sailor's Life, I'm sorry, um, on their album Unhalf Bricking that is a, uh, a traditional British folk song and they really decided that um, they were going to run with that. As I said before, um, where they got their um, music and where they got these sounds, um, there is a, a museum uh, society folk society called the Cecil Sharp house of English folk dance and song <laughs> society. Um, it sounds and... like a cult or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, and... or exactly what you'd see at a Wren <laughs> festival. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And so this is basically an archive for all British folk uh, music and, and writings and stylings. Um, I went to their website and, and checked it out. And um, they have a lot of resources. If you're interested in that sort of thing um, to, learn about what defines British folk music, um, the sounds they have, like things you can listen to, uh, kind of like beginner resources or a beginner primer, um, for British folk. So the band found, found all of their material for this album, essentially, um, from digging through those archives. Yeah, it was mostly um, arrangements and it didn't really seem like there was a whole lot of actual writing new songs. It was just traditional. If you look it up, it says it's a traditional song arranged by this band member. Um, Can I? Exactly. Well, and, yeah. and I can't believe I'm going to say this because it's probably the only time these two bands will ever be thrown in the same category, but they sort of went to the Iron, uh, Iron Maiden school of <laughs> you know songwriting because it's the same sort of thing that especially the Bruce Dickinson era of Iron Maiden does where there's like the rhyme of the ancient Mariner and stuff like where there's these like long <laughs> odes taken from something that you read on a plane, but you don't really have any sort of coherent, you know, sort of narrative. It's just one-offs kind of. And I felt like, you know, as the lyrics guy, I guess I'm getting the rep of that's the first thing I got was sort of like they, they went, well, I guess they're before Iron Maiden. So they're from the same school of the bizarre motifs of medieval slash folk you know, very English tales uh, of your tale. Yeah. Tales yep. of your from, you know, the middle ages or, or, you know, the Renaissance or wherever you want that sort of. So if you like that type of stuff, you're going to love their lyricism. Yep. Getting to what Matt said, only two of the eight songs on the album are original tracks. Um, the first track, come all ye and the last track, crazy man, Michael were written by the band. The rest are, are traditional um, British folk songs. Um, the can i give um, an example of the lyricism by the way because i just have to i can't i can't resist yeah. so yeah, to absolutely. give you an idea and you have to imagine a combination of a female voice and a male voice in a folk styling saying the following so and then lord darnell he took his wife and he sat her on his knee saying who do you like the best of us matty groves or me and then up spoke his own dear wife never heard to speak so free i'd rather kiss from dead matty's lips than you with your finery so there you go. That's that's a little bit of a feel. And just imagine like, you know, the equivalent of behind it and you get like a little bit of a vibe for them's you know. fighting words, John. Yes. There you go. <laughs> the idea getting back to about why they leaned into this um, and making connections with some of the previous albums that we talked about. Um, they heard the band's 1968 album Music from the Big Pink and um, the basement bootleg tapes with Bob Dylan and the band. And that basically they were like, okay, uh, all the bands in America are doing Americana way better and probably better than we ever could. So we're going to go uh, and focus on our roots yeah. and, and focus on that. Know your instead. strengths. And, and, yeah, and, exactly. and I don't know if you can release an album called music from the big pink anymore. <laughs> unless you say L7. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> riot girl bands. <laughs> Getting to what John was saying with some of the lyrics, um, some of these songs uh, are, are literally hundreds of years old. Um, uh, Rain Ardine, the second um, track on the album, is about a werefox who attracts a beautiful woman to him so that he can take them a away were-fox. from his castle. Is that yeah. a werewolf and a fox hybrid? Is that a werefox? No, it's a man who turns into a fox, a werefox. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I never knew um, there was such a thing. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm more Maddie, scared. Uh, Maddie Groves is a, a classic murder ballad. Uh, it dates to at least 1613. Wow. Mm. Um, and it's about an adulterous tryst between a young man and a noble woman that is ended when the woman's husband discovers and kills them. And then um, uh, Tam Lynn, which is the song we heard to open my segment, is a medieval Scottish ballad that dates back to at least 1549. Mm. So um, it takes place on Halloween and revolves around the rescue of Tam Lynn by his true love from the Queen of Fairies. So you don't, <laughs> you don't, you not only have, uh, you know, these songs being old, but they're also drawing on, uh, you know, mythic stories of Britain and, and fairies and, and things like Amazing. that. Where foxes um, and fairies, man. Good mm-hmm. stuff. Yep. And so critically, um, this is, as I was saying, um, the critics either thought this was the peak of the band, um, where they made the leap and found their original style and embraced the traditional British folk music and people like that. Um, or they, critics found it derivative and predictable compared to their earlier albums. So I am curious to see what their earlier albums are like, um, based on what I've read, um, the more I listened to this album, the more I did like it and get into its groove. But at first, I, I, it was hard for me to to get into. What did you guys think about this? Um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Matt, it's all yours. I love this album. I thought I, I, from, the, from the beginning track, Come All Ye, I was very taken back by what I was hearing. I felt like I, was, I would just came from a tent at Bonnaroo and just came across some random band. And that was, you know, because that's a very... Yeah, it's a very folky song and it just, it sounded great. It didn't sound, um, you know, it sounded, the production was pretty good and didn't sound, I, I was surprised that it came from the sixties. It just didn't sound like that at all. Um, and then I, I, Maddie Groves, I absolutely loved. That was another one that just grabbed me from the beginning. It's kind of an interesting song that it's, it's very long and it's got two parts. The first part I liked a lot more. That was, that was essentially um, with all the, the lyrics about the, uh, that Josh was mentioning about the, 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 the tryst and the, you know, the fight between the, the husband and the, uh, the adulterer. Um, I thought that was great. I really, really liked that song. And I just loved the throw in of the Celtic Irish trad, you know, the jig and the reel during the, mm-hmm. uh, the six track, the medley. Um, Tam Lynn, it was a bit long, but I, I did really like kind of the offbeat. It was a little, it had some interesting, uh, melodic, uh, structures there. And, um, I just, I thought this was very, a really fun listen, a very easy listen right in my wheelhouse of, you know, folk Americana, you know, I, and, uh, with the, with the twist of the, um, the British Celtic, um, you know, kind of take I, and, and along with, uh, I believe her mate, Sandy Denny, the lead singer, uh, I, yeah. I thought she mm-hmm. has a gr- great voice um, and it, it's a great length. Um, I just, the only thing I didn't like about this was the second song that wasn't really a song. Raynard, Raynardine was kind of just a little bit, little meandering. I kept waiting for a hook or for some sort of, um, mm-hmm. you know, some sort of melody to, you know, kick in or something to do something different. And it kind of just stays there. It's more like a spoken word kind of a thing. Um, but I, I really like this. I can, I would definitely go back to this album for sure. John, what about you? Tell me your thoughts on. I, Leaf. I did not dislike it as much as I thought I was going to after hearing the first couple tracks. Uh, I wouldn't say I liked it. Um, I'll start by saying that I, folk is a tough sell for me to begin with. So let me start by saying that there's some I like, but it, it's, it, it's a tougher genre for me. Um, I will say that the album for me is when they are playing guitars and that's at the forefront of it. Those are the mm-hmm. better songs. And when the guitars go to the back and they start bringing in other instrumentation, it starts to become a cliche of folk music, which I'm not as big a fan of. And so I, the album to me is songs that are more guitar driven. As Matt said, the lead singer's fantastic, great voice, um, but it's a folk album. And if you like all the trappings of folk, you're going to like it. 
if you're like me and it's an acquired taste or, or not an easy thing, I don't think there's anything on this album that's going to change it. The guitar isn't so good. The voice isn't so standout that I would say. Um, and, and the lyric, I mean, the lyrics are, <laughs> I was about the to lyrics are brutal. And, and, you know, unlike Iron Maiden, who's playing incredible guitar behind it, there ain't any, you know, triple guitar attack in this. It's, it's you know, it's, it's like the type of lyrics that used to get written for me when I taught creative writing by kids who would write me 95 page, very sincere odes and tales inspired by something they'd read. And, and it seemed like that over and over and over again. So God bless them. But John, they uh, might not have had triple guitar, but I think they might have had triple fiddle. Uh, they, yeah, they had, yeah, they had, they had fiddle. They no love, fiddle. no love for the, for the Irish trad, John. The, no, no, as in fact, when you were saying that, I'm like, well, there's something I have to Google. What an I- is he saying Irish traditional music or is a trad an X? Ex- like last week, I learned that there's something called the Jews harp, and it's not something that's anti-Semitic. <laughs> and this week, I learned that there's an Irish trad. So yes. as a, as part Irish myself, I'll need to, I guess, you know, get my bona fides there. I, I will say that there's two songs that are particularly good. Uh, Farewell, Farewell, and Tam Lin, I think were very strong. Um, I found a couple, there weren't terrible, uh, any terrible songs. As Matt mentioned, Ray Nardine is like as folk as folk gets, but like the boring, it's not nothing really a there song, folk. You know, I was going to say, it's just, it's like boring. And it isn't even like a, like a, <laughs> I guess for lack of a, like a hoedown type folk song where everybody's going crazy and fit. It's just sort of there. She's talking um, while somebody's playing a repetitive guitar part. You know, yes. that's all that's happening. Yes. Right. Key, key being repetitive. I, yeah. I thought a lot of the songs were a little too long. Um, so yeah, guitar, pretty good. Lyrics, trash. And then <laughs> the in between, it depends on how you feel about folk. So there's sort of my take. Yeah, I think... Um the guitar parts are what worked for me on this album on, on songs like Tamlin. Um, Richard Thompson is known for his guitar work and is a, um, a, a foundation, another foundational well-known British folk person. Um, and he, he's on that lead guitar. Um, it's coincidentally enough or not coincidentally, but um, funnily enough, the lead singer left the band after this um, album was released and, uh, because she didn't like the direction that the band, she didn't want to lean into that British folk sound. Um, I would have liked more variety in the vocals on this album. I, I found her voice, repet- although good, repetitive. I, she was the only singer. Like I would have liked some, you know, harmonies or, or different people mm. singing. Um, but it's interesting uh, too. Cause I, I, I actually knew, I know Richard Thompson, um, not, not terribly well, but I, I have been familiar with some of his songs. And I also know that he is, he is a we- very well regarded songwriter and guitar player um, that mm-hmm. has that's been around for many many years. So I was surprised and uh, interested to learn that he was in this band. So that was kind of cool to learn. Um, the other thing I learned was and and and, and hearing the the medley, the Irish kind of the, the trad part that I was talking about. Um, I was I was thinking to myself, well, I know that they call them jigs and reels. So I but I don't know the difference. So I, I actually mm-hmm. looked that up too, and I found a video from. Um, this uh, this group called the Goddard Sisters, and they explained that when when the music's playing, if you can go strawberry, 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 strawberry along with the music, it is a jig. And if you go rutabaga, 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 it is a reel. So there you go. So when you listen, and to I this, think that will also encapsulate: Do you like folk music or do you <laughs> not? That that activity right there. Well, you'll so. notice if you listen that the medley's got that six track has four different uh, you know parts to it, and it go it does go. I listen to it again, and it goes jig, reel, jig real so um i i don't know I, I i lived in ireland for three months so i got to see a lot of that stuff so it kind of brought me back and as as you guys know i'm a little bit of a sentimentalist so uh so i did appreciate that little little, little bit just a little bit just a tad just a tad um so i did yeah i, I like that i mean if you if you like this album there's a whole world of british folk music for you to explore this by all accounts is one of the best representations of british folk so um You'll you'll know right away if this is your thing. I think I, I have think. to check it out. Um, yeah, Matt's gonna go to the Cecil Music House now. That's right. And I'm gonna there. join the cult. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, any final thoughts, John, from you? No, I, if you if you like folk music, like I said, they they certainly could play their instruments, and they're putting probably above average folk music out there. I do think though you have to be a fan of folk music. It doesn't for me folk albums that I love 
transcend the genre to some degree in the same way that someone might feel the same way about metal or hip hop or punk where you splice it just enough. Maybe you put the pop in your punk music, right? Maybe you have more melody in your metal music, things like that. This would be one where if, if you like straight chaser folk, you're going to like it. If you need a little more, or like we said, variation, I, I wouldn't say hard pass, but I, I wouldn't dig into this immediate. I wouldn't comb the stacks to find this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I would, and I would go with uh, Come All Ye and Matty Groves as standout tracks for me. And I would say, you know, kind of, you can feel free to step, skip past rain, rain or Dine. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I don't even know what that means, but um, yeah. Nice. I like Tamlin. Um, 